Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be shifting from fountain pens to hobonichis and planners. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. If you are new, hi, my name is Karen. I'm a lefty who loves fountain pens, fountain pen inks, hobonichi, planning, and all of that good stuff. I'm also from the Philippines. And if you'd like to connect, hope you can subscribe to my channel and join our loving, growing group of like-minded stationary fountain pen journaling geeks so guys it's already april and it is scorching hot in the philippines it is so hot it's like beads of sweat automatically start appearing all over so <laughs> i'm here in my room i try not to go outside unless i absolutely have to so i'm taking the time to really enjoy my hobby my stress reliever which is journaling with my fountain pens. So today I will be giving you an update since it's the end of first quarter. Just giving you an update on how I have been doing so far with the tech shows that I have. So I know some of you have commented that I have a lot of planners but actually each of these have different functions. I reach for them in different frequencies so I will be going over that in a couple of minutes also an update on these pouches these are pouches from hobonichi and this is what i have been using for the past you could say month or two all right so let us start with the pouches that i have the first one is a small pouch this is from marie kondo field of dreams if i'm not mistaken and this is the layout. It's a bright pink interior and a lovely field of yellow flowers with a bit of pink and orange and red mixed in there. My daughter loves it. Her favorite color is yellow, by the way. And what I have here are just pens. And yes, they are not fountain pens. These are mostly my gel pens that I use for work. They're all Sarasa. I really love the Zebra Sarasa. I have a Sarasa Dry and I also have, I actually have three Sarasa Dry pens. This is a refill that I put inside the clip. So if the, if the text in the refill is white, it's a dry as opposed to the usual clip which is like black or gray writing. That's your normal gel pen. This is what the real Sarasa pen looks like. But I just buy refills in and I just replace them inside the... I mean, they're all compatible anyway. And then I also have here mild liners because I sometimes use it for work when I'm putting down notes. This just helps me organize my ideas and thoughts. And the reason why I don't use fountain pens for work is that, first of all, I don't use Tomoe River paper for my notebooks. It's just the usual standard notebooks. And using your ballpoint and gel pens, they dry faster than the fountain pens. So I don't get into trouble with, you know, smudging and making things not legible anymore. So... This is what I bring with me to work. And I have been loving it thus far. I really love the flat lay option. And it also helps you with organization. So, yep. This one I truly love. I'm just quite worried about this one getting really, you know, dirty over time. I've actually sprayed this with the 3M fabric protector. But, I mean, you can only do so much. Especially if... You know, it comes to contact with dirt and it gets spilled and all of that. So, yeah, I really enjoy using this. The next one is a bigger pouch and this is called the Anne, meaning older sister. And this is the Whisker Cat collection. I actually have a video wherein I received the first one with lots of creases and... I reached out to Hobonichi, so they sent me another one. So, these 
are my currently inked pens. They don't fit anymore in my pen holders or in my pen rolls, which usually just holds three or four at a time. And it's embarrassing <laughs> that I have a lot of pens currently inked, but you know, we will get through them eventually. And right now, there's not much organization or I'm not taking advantage of the organization in this pouch because it's just my catch-all for all my inked pens. Fountain pens for that matter. All right, so now we move on to Hobonichi's. So the first two are weeks. The first one is this one, the Cafe Bowentai. And the second one is the Gurunpa Kindergarten. I have different functions for these uh, books. The first one is my to-do list. So this is my everyday carry. So just doing a quick flip through. I use this spread for my steps. So I'm not currently going to the gym, but I try to put in a lot of steps as much as I can. So I don't update this daily. The Fitbit tracker is really good enough for me to write all of my steps in a month in one go. So I don't have to go back every day. And then the ones in red are the ones that I was able to do 5,000 steps or more. It just gives me an indicator if I need to move more, <laughs> basically. Okay, so this is... So for the monthly spreads, I'll just go through it quickly. I just have here all of my expenses, things I need to pay, and all of that. And then the weekly spread is just for me to take note of my purchases or expenses for the day. And then I have a rolling weekly on the left side, just so I have freedom and flexibility on things that I need to do for that week. So I don't need to write it over and over again in daily pages. So yeah, that's basically it. My layout is very simple, but it works for me. So I don't change it. So for the notes and the blank pages, these are just random things. I don't use trackers anymore. Sometimes I use it to, you know, plot down my inks because I don't bring my ink diary wherever I go. The weeks is a more useful tool. I also do some swatching here. <laughs> and basically just notes. My 100 list consists of movies and series that I watch. So for movies, um, I just shade the entire box if I finished it. For the series, I tick which episodes I finished watching. So it's also good that I know in which episode I left off or which episode I haven't watched yet. So these are the series and movies that I'm currently watching. Mostly they're on Netflix or Disney Plus. And yeah, since I have a day job, I don't really watch as much and I would prefer to spend time with family. For this tacho, I reach for this on a daily basis. It's always in my bag. It's just something that I cannot leave the house without. And it's very useful because you have the first part, the weekly spread where you can you know, plot the things that you need to do for the week. You don't have to be very strict on certain days. And you have enough blank pages at the back for you to create lists, do some notes, and all of that. Okay. This is quite different from the Gurunpa Kindergarten Weeks. And this is what I used to track the academic schedule of my daughter. She's actually in nursery, so... There's not much really to track um, in terms of her academic progress. I mean, they're doing alphabets and colors and numbers. But what I want to do is, I want to list down her lessons for the week. If they have homework, if they have exams or quizzes, if there are special instructions from the teacher, I write them all down here. And if she's sick, so there was a time she was sick for a long time. And I just 
put it here for reference. So I know this doesn't get much, you know, real estate. I only put down her lessons. Not much information is there. But it gives me, you know, peace of mind that I am also seeing her progress as a toddler, as a kindergartner. So for this one, I don't reach for this as often. Maybe once a month. At the end of the month, I go through her materials, I go through her school notebook, and I just plot and jot down her lessons. And that's it. So this might be, you know, useful if you have children and they're in different levels and you just want to track their progress. You can use different colors. You can assign a colored pen for a child and then you can plot down their activities if they have after school activities if they have sports if they have recitals and concerts and all of that it would be good to have a separate pet show apart from your edc because this one can get chaotic very fast and you just want to have something that's separate something that you don't need to bring on a daily basis but it's enough for you to leave in your desk and, you know, just have a glance at it to see how busy your work week will be versus how busy their schoolwork will be. So those are my uses for the weeks. Okay, this one, I know you've seen this from my Manila Pen Show haul, but this is actually my ink diary. So I've switched out from the Hobonichi covers and I've decided to use a leather cover. So you might think I'm getting bolder because I'm playing with inks and then there's light colored leather and all of that. But I was thinking, won't it be nice to see how the leather patinas and how it will mix well with your colors? So like for example, you may have a smudge here and there. You may have an ink splatter or a droplet that you've missed and it goes into the cover. I'm using the Techo for last year and I don't want to, you know, put this to waste as Tomoy River paper is really very good. So I just put markers here on where I last placed my inks and then other markers just so I know when is the next or where is the next available paper for me to play and experiment with inks. So this one, I don't reach for it on a daily basis. So this one, I don't bring this with me. It just stays in my desk. It's in a drawer that I can easily access. The next one is an A6. This is a pet show for 2023. And this is what I use to track my deliverables at work. It's also a way for me to revisit my attendance because we do online tracking since we're on a hybrid setup. I just have to file the days where I'm in the office and file days where I'm working from home and days that I need to go to the field. And this that show helps me track my location, who I'm meeting with, my deliverables, and my tasks for the day. So this is very work-centric. And the size enough is small enough to fit in my laptop bag without making my bag too heavy. And yes, this is also one of my used techos. So it's all written stuff. I don't use this to post photos, stickers, and all of that, but I get very colorful with the use of my inks and pens. So I'm currently using a twist B and I think the ink here is Odenil. So this is also a great conversation starter <laughs> since um, not many people in my office use fountain pens and not many people use Hobonichi. Okay, the next one is my five-year Techo and it's getting chunky. I'm only in the second year but just as an update, I had a recent accident with this Techo and you can see that there was water involved and you can see here the darkening of the natural leather inside so you can clearly see that 
there was water spilled. And it's also evident here at the back part. Can you see that? It's like a water swirl and with some fountain pen ink mixed in it. So I just have this realization that for archiving and journaling, I may need to be more conscious of the inks that I choose. Because yes, this happened. This is a Ferris wheel press ink and it's not waterproof. So as soon as water got into it, it just basically literally dissolved my writing. And the intention of this book is really as a memory keep for my daughter when she grows up. So I've decided that from now on, I will just be using waterproof inks, archival inks, registrar's ink for my memory keeping. And right now, I am using Mont Blanc's blue and black permanent ink. I'm also starting to explore other brands like the Platinum Carbon Black. There are good reviews on that one. So that was a painful lesson learned. But I'm glad it's only in my second year that I had to find this out the hard way. <laughs> As for the cover, um, I think it's okay. It's wearing already because this is a fabric cover. You can really see some pilling over there. And you can't help it. It happens. And sometimes I wish I could have just gotten the natural leather. But I didn't want to waste this. Maybe if I'm able to sell it with, <laughs> but there's so much damage already. Maybe I'll just wear it to death and then just get a new one. Or maybe just sell this for a lower price. So for the five-year Tetcho, I try to reach for this, not every day, but maybe a couple of times in a week. Because this is just meant to, you know, document her milestones. So it's not very hard to maintain a five-year tetro especially if you have something to work towards a goal so if you don't have that goal you won't be as motivated to reach for this regularly and the last one the last one is my least used tetro and this is the a5 cousin this is meant to be my journal, something that I can put my thoughts and feelings, but February, I was failing miserably, so I decided to just pick myself up, move forward, and then use the empty and the blank pages, you know, to just to decorate and, you know, have some fun with my inks. I mean, I have a ton of them, so might as well <laughs> put them to good use. I don't reach much for this tet show mainly because I have started moving around. So I've been going to places and this book is quite heavy. This tet show is heavy. And adding it to my work bag, to my laptop bag, it gets really heavy. Unlike from last year wherein we were just full-blown work from home, I have more time on my desk and just writing and journaling in between in between sessions, in between meetings, if I need to take a break, this is always what I go for. With mobility starting to go back to its usual pace, it's hard to, you know, start writing and journaling. So it gets harder to journal, especially if this is just in your desk. So I know I will not be getting this next year. I'm going to stick with my A6 and my weeks. Um, but let's see, I still have three more quarters. See how else this can be of good use to me. So that is an update of my Tetros for this first quarter of 2023. You could say I have a good strong start with regard to my weeks and my uh, original planners. The A6 5 year, it's okay. I've been missing some days but... For me, it's not really that bad. I mean, I can catch up. And I'm realizing the A5 may not be for me since we are starting to go back to work, go back to the field, and travel more. Those are some of my reflections and thoughts for this quarter.
So for those of you who have Techos or Hobonichis or other brands like the Midori or the Jibun Techo, how has your first quarter been? Was it chaotic? Was it very boring? Was it a very slow pace? Or did you have to catch up or felt like you were being rushed all the time? So for me, I've had peaks and valleys. There were times when I was so rushed, so pressured, and then there were, you know, slow days. And I relish slow days. So if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys!